another Watch Pro original uh, interview with me, Rob Corder. Um, I'm the editor of, of the title. I'm meeting today with Mike French, who's the managing director and co-founder of Christopher Ward Watches, uh, an online only uh, digital native watch brand uh, based in the UK, but which owns its own uh, assembly and manufacturer in, uh, in Switzerland. So uh, as an online only brand, we will find out whether this is, uh, whether the current coronavirus situation is making them a little bit more resilient because they don't have uh, retail partners with their doors closed to worry about. Um, but we'll also get an up update on the, the state of the company in, in general uh, and, uh, and Mike's view of the uh, of the watch industry. So let's uh, welcome in Mike. Thank you. You're not in the middle of a London street. That's just a... Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's my, it's my son's wallpaper. And, uh, <laughs> is that... I'm working, he's, he's left home and lives in Dubai and so I'm uh, work, working out. Oh, is that right? What does he do there? He works for the same company as me. He's a journalist as well. So uh, but he's writing about oh, great. the hotel industry just as, you know, start, <laughs> starting out in his career, sort of internship mostly. Um, is that right? Yeah, interesting. That it being given the uh, hotel industry's uh, not uh, not uh, not uh, is well, it's probably one of the worst affected uh, sectors, isn't it? Uh, well, hotel industry in Dubai is a pretty brutal industry to be in at the moment because because there's no flights coming in and out of it there either, yeah. and the oil price is in the toilet, and uh, yeah, there's a few headwinds, shall we say? Yeah, one or two. Yeah, yeah, one or two. Yeah, yeah. gosh. So I'm going to um, going to talk about. Uh, how things are for you now but i thought maybe a bit of bit of context maybe talk maybe look back a year or so and look at the trajectory you were on and because it, 2019 was a pretty significant year for chris ward with um, fresh investment was really yes. the, uh, business business growth fund um one of your founder you know the th one of the three men in a boat one of your founders yeah the man <laughs> one, of, one of them jumped ship <laughs> the man who gave chris ward its name uh, oh, oh yeah so, <laughs> he already fell in <laughs> So, so, so tell me about 2019. Let's let's see how you were doing until the coronavirus thing hit. Uh, we, well, it was a it was a it was a good year for us. I mean, uh, um, both eventful, as you say, uh, particularly in terms of bringing in the, the new investment from BCF. Uh, first time, uh, it wasn't just Peter and I putting money into the business, which <laughs> was rather nice. Um, so, um, and I think uh, in some ways very fortuitous in terms of its timing, given what. Uh, we're currently suffering uh, as a as a world. Um, so um, uh, yeah, no, we uh, the the we completed that deal. I think uh, the end of July, beginning of August, um, and um, we finished the year so sort of plus nineteen percent on the year, which was uh, bang in line with our plan. Uh, despite the the very back end of the year, we are our year end finishes at the end of March. So. Uh, we had the uh, the back end of uh, of, um, of the last week or two, which was a uh, coronavirus infected, uh, and it was those early days when I think the uh, the most significant uh, impact of coronavirus were felt by us um, when people really didn't know what the hell was going on, um, and we actually closed the business for two days whilst we uh, regrouped, um, then reopened. We sorted out the um, sorted out the um, the social distancing within the office. We took the view um, as a board uh, immediately that um, uh, we wanted to continue uh, where possible to trade. It was clear ultimately from the government's uh, pronouncements that um, uh, they were keen and indeed encouraging online businesses to, con to continue trading. We needed no, no, no such encouragement. <laughs> really. sure. um, and uh, we reopened uh, two days later with a skeleton staff and uh, over, we've become very, uh, very proficient around uh, um, running uh, under the social distancing um, requirements. Mm. Uh, and over time, over the sort of five weeks of uh, of confinement for us all, we've gradually increased the staffing levels. And uh, this morning at the uh, at our uh, what we call our morning prayers meeting, which we have at eight thirty by uh, by Zoom, uh, my my agenda for the week was. Uh, or for the next few weeks is uh, and certainly for this week is uh, right let's uh, let's really now get serious because may the 7th onwards fingers crossed uh, although we haven't had any exactitudes from our uh, our government at the moment um 
clearly we're going to be in a sort of a, a gradual loosening of lockdown. Mm. Um, clearly as well, the, the priority will be the safety of, uh, of everybody. But as I say, we've, we've developed a pretty, because we've been trading all the way through, uh, versus companies who are um, having to reopen for the first time, maybe in five or six weeks, we're in probably in better shape because we've developed processes and ways of working that I think will enable us to ramp up more quickly. Mm. So um, uh, we're hopeful that uh, that come May the seventh, there'll be um, you know, there'll be a gradual loosening off. And when you talk about keeping the business working, are you talking about just in the UK or in Switzerland? Because Crystal Ward owns its own assembly and manufacturer in Switzerland as well. Yeah, we were we were uh, we were um, one of the very few um, places in uh, in Switzerland that uh, was able again to remain open. We'd uh, we'd we'd um, assume back in December, early January that. Whilst we had no idea it would be as serious as uh, it was, as soon as there were indications, for instance, our case manufacturers in China, um, and um, we um, we made sure that we were well covered with components, and therefore we had the componentry to continue operating when in Switzerland, when uh, when everyone else was closing around us, and the team have done a magnificent job, really. Mm. Um, uh, some of our uh, some of our uh, our atelier in um, in um, in Beale has taken up some of the slack from uh, another another part of our operation down in Ticino, Ticino, which as you know is um, is the southernmost part of uh, Switzerland on the Italian border, yeah. and some sixty thousand workers daily come across from Italy to work in the watch industry, um, and of course that remained open for fair while I think there are if my memory serves me correctly there are seven crossing points or seven border points and they closed all but two and while some of the some of our staff were having to um, uh, queue for up to two hours to get across the border they were still doing that wow the workforce. <laughs> then they closed the border understandably so we moved all of the all of the components that was down there into Beale and uh, continue to uh, to operate only uh, in Beale. Uh, and so far, um, we've not suffered any shortage of, uh, of watches. Um, when Solita closed, um, they were we were due to we were due to be launching um, this week. In fact, at the back end of this week, um, two chronographs based on Solita's three thirty movement. And they couldn't get those tours before they closed down. Mm. So we had to reshuffle everything um, in terms of the launch program. They'll now come later in the year. And um, we pulled forward some other launches. Um, a, very, uh, a very important one for us uh, on Thursday, um, which I know you know about, but I, we can't talk about in detail. Pulled off by your PR people not to talk about Yeah, um, but I, uh, um, I think it's arguably the, the most important launch uh, uh, of the first half of the year for us, um, and it will be. And I don't know if you know this, but um, one of the most exciting things that we've done in the period since lockdown is we, along with the with HM Government, are the only other business that has created a TV ad. So from Friday, Christopher Ward will go on television for the first, with a TV ad promoting our new launch. And it's the first TV ad we've ever had. And uh, I have to say, um, the, um, the team that's come together to do this have done an absolutely amazing job uh, in what are obviously very unusual circumstances. Yeah. So it's, very, it's a very exciting week for us in lots of ways. <laughs> So was that, I mean, that TV advert, was that shot before people went into lockdown? And if not, have you got no. you know, social distancing or is it animated? I yeah, know. no, it, no, it was, it was shot, shot in London uh, over the Easter weekend, five days over the Easter weekend. Um, and um, we, um, uh, the whole studio, there was only, I think, five people in the, all worked through in terms of um, social distancing and masks and all of that, all the PPE right. that you could uh, imagine, tapes on the floor to make sure that nobody could move across them. Absolutely astonishing uh, job these guys have done. Mm. Uh, 
and uh, the decision to go on TV, we were we were we appointed uh, part of uh, the reason we, um, in fact, you know, arguably the key reason we brought in uh, BGF uh, was be to fund the growth of the business, yeah. and the growth of the business largely comes through investment in uh, uh, you know marketing the business across the world, as it were, but also uh, importantly in this country. Uh, and since um, December and January, we've been working with um, uh, a, t- a new team of um, of media agencies, um, both um, um, sort of media planning, media buying, creative agencies. And part of this was brought in. I, I appointed uh, a chap called Steve Kershaw to the board as non-executive director back in August. And uh, Steve's background, he was um, uh, an MD with, um, with um, BBH, one of the world's great advertising agencies. Steve and I go back uh, a long way, um, um, but he's been instrumental in bringing together with us this, this group of agencies uh, who are, um, and in his 25 year experience in the, in the industry and certainly in mine, I've never known a group of agencies work together in this way, completely together as it were, with a single goal in mind of, um, of, of developing a new approach to, um, to communicating the Chris Ford brand. And we anyway decided that we were going to be um, creating a new visual and verbal language, but we hadn't decided back in the, on the 23rd of March, um, which uh, which routes we would be going down yeah, in terms of um, certainly in the early days. And then it became very clear that um, sadly, um, you know, um, print titles were largely going to be difficult. Um, uh, and therefore, uh, and it became clear that uh, in lockdown, that all TV audiences were up to 40 to 50 percent greater than at any time in the in recent history yeah. combined with because lots of brands had pulled their advertising uh, combined with the lowest costs uh, per tvr that you've ever seen in your lifetime sort of thing so these 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 advantages sadly did driven by the circumstances we decided were too uh, too good an opportunity to miss so we decided back at the end of march we didn't know at the time whether it was possible. We discussed, could we, could we, if we, if we, if we could, we would certainly want to go on TV with, uh, with the launch of uh, a new watch uh, from, uh, from the 30th of April. And the team, um, as a team, we decided, yeah, we could do it. It was possible. And as I say, um, in an incredibly short period of time, these talented people uh, pulled together the most incredible ad uh, and, and as I say, uh, quite remarkably, other than HM government in the UK mm. that has been that has created a new TV ad in lockdown is Christopher Ward, which is rather remarkable, really. Uh, is um, I mean, it's also remarkable from a sort of st- strategic point of view because Christopher Ward is is one of the largest digital native brands. You know, you have no retailers, you have no physical stores. Uh, everything you, you you know from from the year dot you you've been an e-commerce o- only brand and, and yet your media choices tend to be right at the traditional end you know you, i've seen lots of outdoor advertising lots of print lots of um uh, well tv tv now you're starting so you you sort of run your uh you're out in front in terms of e-commerce um and doing things differently in terms of how you promote that um, yeah, I mean, although we also have um, a big um, digital sure. um, campaigns as well. So all of our, all of our, whether it's print, out of home, now TV, we're, are all supported by significant digital campaigns. Mm. But we, the you know, you, you will know only too well, Rob. You, you you need to put your brand where your customers are likely to see it, mm. and we're very clear about who our customers are. You know, these are they tend to be um, you know. You could characterize them socio-demographically, but that's all a bit hit and miss, really. Um, uh, it, what we know is that they're, uh, they're, 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 they're quite wealthy, um, they're 25 to 55, all of that stuff. But actually what differentiates them more than anything is um, they're curious men. 
Yeah, these are p- men who are curious about life in general, mm. and tend to. Uh, they're not. Um, they're not the classic brand ponies. Um, they are. They are people who will make their own mind up. They're independent of mind and spirit, um, and that curiosity leads them towards brands like us, um, where the intrinsic value of the product is understood uh, and valued very highly uh, and uh, so we we go we, we we look to go where um, where these people are um, are likely to be um, reading watching visiting yeah um, and that's that's i think true of any brand that's the one of the classic thing you do you go where your people are likely to be but first thing you need to know who your people are I guess, I guess that in, I guess that uh, affects where you would choose to run your TV advertising. I mean, you know, it, it, do you know which TV? Yeah, yeah, no. Well, it's it's. Well, we've do, we've done a uh, we've done a um, an exclusive deal with Sky. Um, and so, um, and as you know, these days you're able to. Uh, not only have we uh, um, other, have we managed to get a secure a very um, advantageous deal because of the circumstances we're also able to make sure we're in prime positions um, around exactly the sort of programs that curious men are likely to be watching. So, uh, and the panoply of, um, of channels that Sky have, albeit the, the focus will be on um, Sky One, Sky Witness, um, et cetera. Um, we will be popping up in the places you'd expect that target customer to be at prime times and in the middle of, um, of programs, not at the edges. So really very well targeted. And in, in normal circumstances, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of these sorts of, uh, these sorts of opportunities that are currently, uh, currently available. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing story of, of business as usual, it seem, seems to me. But I mean, you must have taken a, a hit in terms of production and sales. Um, Actually, sales have been pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, uh, April will be uh, April. Um, as I say, we, we ended up um, you know, 90% up for the whole of last year to March. April will be stronger than that. And so in some 19, weeks, we've been. 19 or 90? 19, yeah. 19, yeah. I, I wish you were 90 rather than me. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. You're a, t- you're a tougher taskmaster than I am. <laughs> Um, but we're uh, we're strong. At, uh, April, the first month of the uh, so essentially uh, lockdown month, um, is uh, our performance has been stronger uh, than that, and in some weeks significantly stronger, close to the ninety plus ninety. Uh, the first two weeks of April, for instance, were plus seventy five and plus seventy two percent on last year. Year on year. Yeah. That, that is incredible. So I guess you put that down to to what people are consuming more media. People have got more time on their hands to. Indulging yeah, I, think, in their curiosity, I mean, and, 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 and the fact that we have a, um, you know, we are an online brand. Um, so um, um, it's understood that's, that's what we are. So, uh, but yeah, the market um, for us has been, uh, has been, and we've had new launches, of course. So um, unlike, unlike, um, unlike many brands who've had to delay um, the launch of their new releases, um, the current situation, A, because we chose to trade from day one and we were able to organise around that, we've not, uh, we've not uh, changed anything. And unfortunately, the, the two big launches that we, uh, we had scheduled for, uh, for this time, end of March into April, the C65 GMT World Timer and the C60 Elite GMT have both been phenomenal. Um, so we've been very fortunate that uh, we had those releases and that we were able to uh, a produce them and then um, and then market them to our to our customers, and they've gone down incredibly well. Um, well, you seem, so, uh, right, you, sort of, you seem to have the right product for the right time as well. In a lot, you know, steel sports watches are still so so hot, and, uh, and they're not yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, as well, there's, two, there's 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 a couple of trans sports watches that. Uh, 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 clearly on trend as you know and, and, and I don't see that uh, slowing down in any time soon but also this retro the C65 um, 
uh, case encapsulates our retro dive um, collection and retro is still you, you you know you'll have seen all of the releases that were planned for basil world <laughs> i mean you know if you if you were to say well what was the biggest trend going to be in basil world shock horror it's sports watches and retro again you know so nothing 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 could change really and therefore it's still uh, a very hot trend and you know i think uh, i think it's a um it's a really great uh, watch as well it's a very uh, it just seems to have captured people's imagination particularly the c65 gmt world time mm. so um so yeah so so a number a number of things have come together fortuitously um for us at, uh, at a time when it's been very you know very difficult and let's not uh, let's not um you know it's also uh, i think testament to the team um who have um despite the majority of us having to uh, work from home um, and uh, all of us getting very well used to uh, zoom meetings and the, uh, the 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 advantages and limitations of these of, of zoom um, and microsoft teams uh, and skype um, you know, the, 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 the attitude has been, well, you don't cut your engine when you're flying into a storm. Um, and uh, the world is littered, as you will know, with examples of um, people being sensibly um, aggressive you know, yeah. in times, in difficult times. And that's always been my philosophy. I mean, it's bizarre, but I quite like, I've always enjoyed recessions because I've always seen it as an opportunity to gain share. Mm. And uh, because most most people's reactions tend to be to go back foot, um, caution. You have to be cautious, but you there's the 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 um, a degree of optimism naturally vanishes, and the first budgets that always get cut are marketing budgets, training budgets, and they're always the ones that I insist never get cut. Mm. So uh, in fact, we've we've increased our marketing budget. <laughs> Um, which allows us to go on TV, um, and uh, you know we uh, right 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 at this very minute, there's a load of training going on <laughs> of our people on the, on new systems for our website. So, um, you know, Steve Kershaw will work for BBH. I mean, they're famous for um, zagging when others zig, um, and, and 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 I suppose that's when I think think back through my career, that's always been sort of. An approach I've adopted as well that um, as long as you think it through as long as you're not foolhardy as long as you know you've got good product you've got uh, you're making good decisions these are the times I think when you can um, take take you know be adventurous and be really sensibly um, aggressive about uh, about uh, uh, your place in the market and it's a real opportunity to go and grab share. So it's actually, you know, touch wood, um, because nobody really knows how all this is ultimately going to um, unravel. Mm. But uh, I think the team have done a a magnificent job in taking advantage in a very difficult time that will be for the better, to the ultimate benefit in the long term of everybody associated with the Chris Ford brand. Mm. So it's, these are exciting, stuff. you know, they continue to be exciting times. Yeah. Uh, and, and finally, I think when we spoke last year, soon after the um, business growth fund investment of 6.25 million, you, you said that a lot of that would be focused on the United States as a, as a market. You thought there was huge yeah. potential there. I mean, is that something that's been slightly put on the back burner because it sounds no, like not, the not, No, not at all. I mean, we talked about um, we're not going uh, on TV in, uh, in the uh, US just yet, but uh, we have uh, a we're just about to ramp up to our biggest ever um, exposure digitally in the US because obviously that's a, a routine. But um, we have a program, a marketing program all the way through the rest of this year. And um, you ain't seen nothing yet. So uh, some of some of, <laughs> there's some really, I mean, this is the start of, uh, uh, we, we talk, we talk in terms of volcanoes. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, from Thursday, the first volcano is going off. Um, the biggest of the year is reserved for September, um, and uh, it is. Uh, we are. We We are. We are in. The, we're, we're producing something very special in uh, in September, for, for, uh, and for that will be for something special for the United States. 
No, something special generally, but um, and um, but the United States will uh, over the course of the year will be ramping up our exposure in the United States. And as I say, the 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 new approach to the communication of the Chris Ford brand with this group of um, you know, highly talented agencies. Um, um, we've developed a, I think in the, in the work, <laughs> it's, I think a fairly, a fairly unique approach, um, generally speaking to what we're doing. Um, but I think almost certainly a unique approach in the world of watchmaking. And it's all about tapping into these curious minded individuals who are attracted naturally to our brand. And, some really interesting routes into them uh, are planned and in the process of being um, delivered. Uh, and it's, you know, Thursday, um, Friday when our first TV ad hits, May the 1st, is just the start really of, of, of the new phase of the communication program for Christopher Ward, which, which as I say, is planned out now all the way through to um, this time next year. Um, Everything else, uh, notwithstanding uh, <laughs> that the world doesn't uh, the world doesn't uh, close, yeah. um, and we're all we're, we're not all re reduced to living in caves by then. Um. <laughs> well, fingers crossed for that. But it's but great to hear some optimism and positivity, and and indeed. Yeah, indeed, well, I I, I I I think it's really important at this time. I mean, you know, you, you have to be an optimist to be in the watch industry for a start. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but naturally, you know. Um, um, the uh, well, inter interesting enough, our new, our new, uh, our new loop, our, our new loop magazine, um, which uh, launches uh, on Thursday. I don't know if you can see, but uh, my my intro is entitled "We Are Optimists." Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, I do think optimism is is you know, a really important value to have especially in times like this our job is um your job and my job as leaders of businesses is to set a tone yeah and uh, there's enough uh, there's enough uh, negativity to uh, to to you know around and actually i do think that um those of us who are in a position to and are able to need to set a very sensibly optimistic tone because we will come through this mm. um, there's no doubt about that and in many ways i think um the world and the watch industry within it can and will be stronger. Um, every recession, this is beyond a recession, we know that, yeah. but every downturn um, normally um, ends up with those the strongest um, surviving uh, and getting stronger. And I actually think that sort of re-emergence of strength at the roots of any industry and any society is not a bad thing. And I do think that our society will take benefits from this, which could uh, which could influence generations, and I'm optimistic about that, not negative. All right, wonderful. Well, in, uh, I'm not going to do Joe Wicks every morning. I'm just going to listen back to this interview for inspiration for the day. I, I feel I feel, <laughs> I feel uplifted, Mike. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Well, no, I'm sure. I'm, uh, I'm sure you're the same. Well, we've managed we've managed not to uh, have any redundancies. We haven't cut anybody's pay. We're still, publishing all of, we're still publishing all of our titles. Um, there has been a hit to advertising, as you would ex as you would expect. I know. But, um, I know. And if we could, if we could keep going through all of this while everybody else is uh, shutting up shop, then I think we'll we'll, we'll emerge. Well, I, I, back to strong roots as well, Rod, because it's clear you've got strong roots. And I read, uh, I um, you know, I read, read, I, you know, reading this the other day, um, <laughs> and your uh, your perspective, and I I completely agree with it. It's about people. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, a, you know, like you, we haven't made anybody redundant. We've only furloughed three people and they're only furloughed because uh, they are high risk. Okay. Yeah, they can't actually work from home, but, you know, uh, they can't do anything. They can't work from home because what they do, um, mainly in pick, pack and dispatch. Uh, therefore, you know, they're, they're furloughed, everybody. And actually those people who are working, we we're paying a premium to them. We're actually wow. giving them a premium. And I do actually absolutely believe in what you said in here to be absolutely, it's all, every industry, every business is all about people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is not a time to do anything other than invest in those people in the best possible way. And over time it will pay back 
it'll pay back, it'll pay back. So I completely concur with what you were writing in the uh, in, in, in that. Right. Uh, and I do think, um, yes, it must be tough. I mean, uh, the uh, I'm worried about a number of watch uh, titles. Um, I've, you know, we all know what's just happened at Revolution, for instance. Um, now I don't know how they're going to come out of it. I think they're in some difficulty already, from mm. what I hear, but uh, you know, they're suspended and um, you know, there are other titles that are in that process as well. So I think, again, in, in your sector, the strong will survive and those with a clear, uh, concise message um, and communication program will come out of this uh, well and we will we, we we've we've suspended at the moment all print advertising for for good reason yeah uh, but we will be back and we're already planning our print advertising for when it's appropriate to do so so it's not um it's not that um you know we're not uh, we're not going to be uh, advertising in print again we will it's just that at this time it's it's not the right way to spend one's uh, hard-earned uh, marketing money. So, uh, I mean, as you, as you said earlier, there's you know, media consumption is doubling and the prices are halving or, or, or whatever else. So it is all about digital at the moment, and we certainly uh, uh, go, have gone that way ourselves. So uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I wish you and, uh, and, uh, and everyone at uh, WatchPro um, you know, every, uh, every success because uh, we, we need you. you know? the, in the industry needs you. Great. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate that and uh, look forward to, to seeing you in person again very soon. Indeed, Rob. Cheers. Right. Cheers then. Bye.